Hello, and thank you for joining us on our online campus today. I'm Pastor Broderick Santiago Mosaic Church, and we are really excited that you're joining us today. I pray that today's message really blesses you and adds to your spiritual journey. Uh, my greatest conviction is that you would only use this message today as a supplemental tool for your spiritual growth, and that this message in no way plate replaces the church that you should be connected to or the pastor that God has put over your life to shepherd and care for you. I hope you enjoyed these next 45 minutes and, and feel free to engage into our online chat, which is right there to the right of this screen. Hey, may God bless you, may God keep you, and may the glory of heaven shine upon you. Have a wonderful day. This, this series here, Closer, it's really a series about worship and about how we can get closer to God through how we worship. And, 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 and I pray that over these past couple of weeks, I've kind of revealed some things to you through scripture in terms of what God wants from you, in terms of how you should worship, uh, and what, in terms of what worship really is. I pray that you've received a, a, a clearer understanding of that. Today, we're gonna to go just a little bit a little bit deeper and I'm actually going to kind of teach you some stuff y'all know like I like to throw Hebrew words in there every now and again I'm gonna give you all something and I also want y'all to see that I actually studied a little bit right so anyway uh, I'm gonna throw some Hebrew stuff out there you don't have to memorize it it's not in your app notes or whatever but just you know just I want you to really understand what we're talking about it, it, it would be a huge disservice if I don't really teach you what the word says if I just give you my own personal interpretation of the word and don't teach you exactly what the word is saying itself. The word can preach. I don't have to preach. The word itself is that powerful, that relevant, that factual, that it can preach itself. And so I want to make sure that I expose and bring out uh, those things that the scripture is all about. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Our focus uh, today is going to come from the scripture, uh, New Testament, you know, Luke 19, 37, 40. And if you, if you have your Bible, you can follow along. If not, we'll have it on the screen. Uh, Luke 19, verses 37 through 40. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says this. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing. Say, shout and sing. Shout and sing. All of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. And this is what they were saying. Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. They didn't like the fact that they were singing praises to Jesus who rode in on a colt, a donkey colt. And, and they're saying he is the king. These Pharisees don't like that. They, they, they already have issues with Jesus. And they're singing. Let, let me fix that. They're shouting and singing it. They're shouting and singing it. Sort of, like, sort of like that shout and singing that you hear at, at football games and, 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 and sporting events. Those, those shouts and singings and cheers. and they're, they're going all in. And here's what Jesus said. Here's what his, this was his response to what they asked him to do. He replied, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst out in the tears. Hallelujah. Woo! King David, that word got to me, Glory. brother. Come on, now. If they kept quiet, the stones in the road would shout out cheers. Can I tell y'all why? Just so I can put this in context and then I'm just going to give y'all some words and, and then I'm going to preach and I'm going to convict you just a little bit and we're going to leave happy in the end, I believe. Amen. I'm going to try to put all of this together. Do you know why the, the stones, if the people didn't shout, can I tell y'all why the stones would have shouted? Here's why. The place where... Jesus was headed, Jerusalem, hometown of one of his friends, a guy by the name of Lazarus. Y'all remember Lazarus? Mm -hmm. This same Lazarus is the same one that Jesus called from the tomb who was pronounced dead. Amen. This is the same Lazarus that was dead. Uh, that same road that led to Lazarus. So the stones even know what Jesus did 
on that day when he called his friend Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Right. Watch this. This is why the people were shouting. When they saw that Jesus was coming and he was on this donkey, two things happened. One, prophecy was fulfilled according to Zechariah. Zechariah 9 9 said that this would happen. Prophecy was fulfilled that very day. So they saw that, like, whoa, this is this is prophetic. This was supposed to happen in the book that we've been reading. Notice this, watch this. I want to clear something up. The book says that some of the Pharisees, some, not all, not the group of them, not the whole of them, but some of them didn't like that. Doesn't say what the others felt. You know why the others didn't say anything? Because the very book that they were reading showed that exact same prophecy. And here this man comes and everybody's saying, King, King, King. And he's on this donkey and prophecy was fulfilled. That's the number one. That's the first reason why the people were excited. Wow, prophecy is being fulfilled. This really is the king. Here's the second thing. Some of those same people who began to break out, break out palms for him, who, was, who were laying down fabric and stuff on the road for him. Some of those same people were eyewitnesses to what he did for Lazarus. They were there when he brought him from the tomb and a dead man who was stinky, been dead for a while. He was an actual corpse. Jesus said, Lazarus, get out of there. And people were there to watch that. This is why they were cheering like, he's coming back. He's going to do this again. I want some of that. Right. Amen. Oh man, y'all don't let that go by. This is why they were shouting. Y'all ever been somewhere and you want and you trying to get somebody's attention and you the loudest person in the room because you trying to get their attention? Well, this is what was going on. They see Jesus coming they're like, King, King, look at me, King, King, look at me. Hey, glory to the King. I want you to pay attention to me. Why? Because what you did for Lazarus, I want you to do for me. Now I'm not dead in the physical, but I'm dead in the spiritual. So I need you to raise my spirit back up. Yeah. I'm not preaching yet. I'm setting this whole thing up, but I'm excited about it. I'm not preaching yet. I'm just going to set it up. I'm going to preach in a minute. And here, here's the thing. This is why these people are excited. And watch this. Anybody here got a testimony? Every hand should go up in this place. And every time you come into this place, whoa, you should begin to think about what God has done for you. You should come in here shouting, knowing that you got the same blessing on the way. You should come in here with the spirit of expectancy because he's going to do it again. Oh, God. Oh, I'm not preaching yet, but I feel like I want to. <laughs> Let me slow it down because I got to get some important stuff to you. This is why the rocks would shout out. Because even the rocks were eyewitnesses to the miracle that Jesus performed. So if the people were quiet, the rocks would have jumped up off the ground themselves and began to give God glory. Why? Because they, they the rocks themselves. How many of y'all know rocks don't live? Thank you. Amen. They don't have life. Thank you. Amen. But if Jesus can raise a dead man, he can raise a rock that... God, why are you trying to make me preach too soon? It's too soon. It is the way you taught me. And, and you know, in seminary, there was preaching 101. You're supposed to take your time and then get into it. God got me all off script. <laughs> my professor would be mad at me in my preaching class. You know you ain't supposed to go that deep too soon. Anyway, y'all y'all get that. Those, those who preach, they know what I'm talking about. So this worship that we're talking about here. Our English, our English dictionary is so small. Our English language is so small. Like we have just a couple words that may describe multiple things. But in the Hebrew, when they talk about this word, let's say worship or praise, there is not an English word that adequately describes exactly what they were doing when they were praising. So here's what happens. There's a whole bunch of words that describe this single word that we know of as praise. Y'all walking with me? Let me know if I get too deep. Say that's too deep. All right, and I'll slow down. So in our language, we have praise. You can look under Webster. You can look under any of those other dictionaries, the American Heritage Dictionary, and you get your definition. But when you say praise, according to Hebrew, there are bunch of them. Matter of fact, when I did the research, there had to be, uh, I think, over a hundred different definitions of the word praise in Hebrew. That's just Old Testament. I haven't even touched New Testament in Greek. 
There's over a hundred different definitions of the word praise. Why? Because it's hard to just put into words the, uh, the, the, the outward expression of the inward thing that was happening to them. So I want to today give you some, some, some words so you can understand what we're talking about. Uh, uh, there's a word that, they, that we call praise, but that, 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 that they use in the Hebrew to describe what they were, were, were encountering, and it's called halel. This word is halel. You all are familiar with this word. You're like, no, nah, I never heard it before. Yes, you have. How many of you just sang and say hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's exactly where the word hallelujah comes from. Hallel. Hallel. Hallel means, literally means to rave, to boast. This is the word you got to get. To celebrate. All right. Amen. To rave, to boast, to celebrate. Have you, how many of you ever went to a party? parties or celebration and it was dead <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you can raise your hand young man that's the truth we've gone to dead parties and what happens oftentimes right is that is that when we come in the presence of God some of us are coming to not a dead party but we're we're making the party dead Sometimes the party is dead not because of the DJ. The DJ got the jam. Sometimes the party is dead because of the people. If you don't got the right crowd, it can be a dead party. If you got a whole bunch of wall huggers and ain't nobody trying to dance, and you know that's the jam that's on. You know that you used to get your groove on on that jam. And then you ain't moving, yeah, you got a whole bunch of wall huggers. Yeah, the party's going to be dead. Had nothing to do with the DJ. Had nothing to do with the environment. The lights were right. Everybody looked good. Nobody was funky. It was dope, right? But nobody danced. It was a dead party. Why? Because dead people showed up. Tell the truth. Right. A celebration. And everybody here raise their hand when I said if you got a testimony. If you have a testimony, that's all you need to celebrate. Matter of fact, you should be driving here like, hallelujah. Whoa, I'm driving in a car that God bless me. Hallelujah. I got gas in the tank. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to praise me today. That's okay. That's okay. I'm, 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 still, I'm still in the overflow from last night. This is the same type of praise that happened in Psalm 35, 18. You read that on your own. That's where you find this word halal. Then there's another word, yada. Yada, not Yoda, not the little green dude from Star Wars. No, yada. Yada. Yada literally means to acknowledge publicly, to give thanks publicly, right? What does that mean? That means it's okay to hallelujah in front of everybody here. Amen. We all came to church mm -hmm. so that we Tell could it. bless the Lord. Amen. If you came for any other reason, then you need to go to the country club down the street. But everybody in this place came to praise the Lord. Amen. So that means you've got to open up your mouth to get what God has in you yep. so that you can get what he has in you out of you. There needs to be an outward expression of the inward trans transformational thing that's happening in you. Jada. Right. The next word is, that just kind of tripped me out. I mean, it really did. Barack. Barack. Yes. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's the president's name and they're not celebrating and praising him too much these days. But no, it's not the same, same thing. All right? It's not the same thing. Barak. It means to bless by kneeling or bowing. When we get down on our knees in the posture of surrender and our hands lifted, we are in the posture or position of barak, meaning praise, a blessing while we're kneeling or bowing. Here's, a, here's another word. Zamar. Zamar. Zamar is when we sing songs, we make music, we praise with instruments. So everything y'all see us do every Sunday morning, Zamar. Zamar. Y'all just taught y'all something. Y'all like, oh man, that's cool. I'm, I'm going to use that, Zamar. Y'all can use that. It's, it's okay. It, it will be legit. It will be right. Here's another one. Shabbat. Now don't y'all try that because I don't want you spitting on your neighbor. Shabbat. Hey, stop it. Somebody can mess up and throw a loogie on somebody. <laughs> Shabbat means to address in a loud tone. Address in a loud tone, let me make it simple. It means to shout. Amen. And when these people saw King Jesus coming on that little colt donkey, 
They were giving him the Shabbat praise. See, I just spit. Thank God y'all y'all not in the front row. If you was one row up, you would have got shower with a Shabbat. A shout. <laughs> it's a shout of Shabbat praise. Watch this. Watch this. I love this. The message version. I got to read what Psalm says in the message version. Psalm 63 3. I love what it says in the message version. It says, In your generous love, I am really living at last. Amen. David is saying, In your generous love, I'm finally living. I'm, I'm finally living at last in your love. Watch this. My lips brim with praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. How many of you do that? We, I mean, like when you sneeze, we might say, God bless you. But we don't even know why we're saying it. It's just something we were taught. But you're saying it because literally your heart stops every time you sneeze. When you sneeze, your heart says, pause. And God says, no, keep going. He unpauses. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Oh, some of y'all did. I know y'all are wise. You got doctors in here. I get that. But real talk, listen here. Every time you say God bless you, you are saying God bless you because God did bless you. Amen. Your heart stopped. You were dead for like a split second when you sneezed. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I just, uh, young folk, y'all, y'all go tell your friends that y'all just learned something new. Young folk in the back and around. He says, I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms wave like banners of praise to you. I'm not going to say that. God wanted me to say this. I, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Some of us, it says, he says here, I bless you every time I take a breath. Some of us curse him every time we take a breath. Because we start complaining about the way things ain't. Instead of praising him for the way things are. Hallelujah. I often say, Wherever you are today, I guarantee at some point in your life, you prayed to be in that exact spot you're in. So why complain about it? Amen. All right, I'm, I'm not preaching. Come on now, slow down, Broderick, slow down. All right, let's go to the next one. Toda. Toda. Toda means to lift hands in adoration. Isn't it amazing that all of these words are here? And a lot of times you see people doing this and you hear them shouting and you see them screaming and you don't understand it. But that's what I'm doing today, teaching you. This is why we do it. The Bible tells us. It gives us the instructions. Lift your hands. Kneel. Shout. Sing. Use instruments. <laughs> All of this is biblical that I'm sharing with you. Okay, then I'm going to preach in one second. Here it is. I got to get the last one here. Tehillah. Tehillah. And Tehillah is... Uh, Exuberant singing. You ever hear King David over here when he sings and he gets that that little growl that oh, you know, I can't do it. I don't want to. I can't sing, but that's that's why you're here and I'm here. You know. But y'all y'all get it and he just like starts doing those runs and he just holds on to it and his head is shaking and sweat is coming out of his brow and he's like, oh man, that's that's tequila. That's tequila. That's it right there. That's exuberant. Uncontrollable, just all in the zone type praise. Okay, okay, let me make it plain. Some of y'all do this already, but not in church. Some of y'all do this at the sporting events when your team scores a touchdown, a field goal, a great tackle, an interception. You give to Hela, but you give it to the football team. I knew I wasn't going to hear no amens there. I said it in my notes. I said, they won't amen right there. Don't worry about it. I had to prepare myself to deal with that brother. You know, that y'all wasn't. Or better yet, y'all to hell out when you're in the car and you decide not to listen to the Christian station. You listen to the other station. Your jam come on. You roll your windows down and it's hot. Cut the AC off and start singing it loud and off key. I know that's not you. But y'all to hell out your jam. When the only person worthy of a to hell out is God Almighty. The only person worthy of a to hell out and exuberant praise, exuberant singing is God Almighty. Why? Because he's the only one who's giving you the life that you have today. He's giving you the very breath that you breathe. He's allowed the sun to stay up there and allowed the earth to... All right. yeah. I'm not going to get scientific on y'all today. Amen. God, I feel like preaching. Amen. So that's guess what I'm going to do. That's just what I'm going to do. 
So those are just a few of the hundred some different definitions of this word praise. That's just a few that I gave y'all. Our English language is so small and so short and so not deep that we miss all the important stuff that's in this Bible. If you read the Bible just in the English and don't go any further and study it and research it for yourself, you will miss the actual stuff that God is trying to reveal to you in this very book. This is why this book remains relevant today and it was written over 2,000 years ago. It's still a blueprint for your life. All you got to do is pick it up and research a little bit. And there's no excuse. You don't have to have a lexicon like I have, and most preachers have. A lexicon is the book that we use to, to kind of uh, translate from the English to the Greek and to the Hebrew. That's what most preachers use. That's what they teach us in, in seminary. That You don't have to have that nowadays. Uh, let me give you all something. If you want to write this down, you can. Go to blueletterbible.org. You can, I don't see nobody writing. Y'all ain't trying to learn nothing today. You got it. You got it. All right. Blueletterbible.org. And you can read, watch this, it's so good. You can read the Bible, you can read any scripture, you can click on the tools to the to the left of it, and you can actually get a complete expository understanding of a particular scripture. I'm, I'm teaching today, and I hope that y'all are getting that. I'm trying to make y'all deeper. At the end of the year, Jesus, I mean, at the end of my life, Jesus is going to say, hey, you know, uh, he's not going to look at the number of people that were here. He's going to look at what I did with the number of people that were here. And if I didn't get you to a deeper place, then I failed you as your shepherd, as your pastor. And so I'm trying to give you something a little deeper so that you can understand scripture and go deeper in scripture. All right. All right, man. I feel like preaching. Let's talk about worship God's way. Let's talk about worship God's way. Mark 12, 30. And you all are familiar with this scripture. The greatest commandment. We find it first in the Old Testament. The greatest commandment. The greatest commandment. This is where we're going to pull how God wants us to worship. Worshiping God's way. We're going to pull it right from this particular scripture. And you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. I'm going to attempt to break down each and every one of those things and show you how that's an important part of how we worship God's way. With all your heart and soul, it's simply put, it's expressing my deepest affection to God. With all, it doesn't say with, with, with some of your heart. It doesn't say when you feel like giving me some of your heart. It's, it's clear, it says with all of your heart and it doesn't stop and soul meaning my deepest affection the things that's down in the very pit of my belly in terms of affection God is only worthy of not this surface level uh, uh, just to do it because pastor says do it. Uh, not this surface level. Uh, let me lift my hands because the man on the piano singer said to lift my hands. Not this surface level. Somebody told me to do it so I'm going to do it. No, from the very pits of your, of your belly, the very pits of your soul, God wants the greatest praise. Yes. With all of your heart. With all of your soul. Amen. In other words, nothing when you come in the presence of God should be competing with your heart. Like nothing, nothing should be competing with God for your heart. I'm sorry. So true. Mm -hmm. When you come in the presence of God, nothing should be competing with God for your heart. All right. God should automatically be able to, 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 to connect with your heart. Matter of fact, that's our only connection point Amen. is the heart. And, and, and when we get here, sometimes, not all of us, some of us, a couple of us, maybe a few of us, one or two of us, we get here and, and, and then our minds and our hearts are inundated with worry. Oh, it's the end of the month. I'm worried. Oh, me and wifey had a little, little disagreement. Got, got a little something going on in my heart. Oh, last night was kind of rough at the house. Me and these kids, I'm telling you, they drive me to your heart. And God is saying, when you got all this other stuff filling up your heart, when is there room for me? Do you want to worship me the way I want you to worship me? It has to be with all of your heart and all of your soul. And I know y'all sitting here looking at me like, man, dude, that's impossible. 
Thank you. It is not impossible. It's difficult. It's difficult for me sometimes to come in here and give, give God my heart and my soul and be able to preach the message that he has prepared for me to share with you all. It's difficult. I mean, anything could happen. It could be me showing up at the church and the AC is not on that we paid for, which is on now. <laughs> it could be, it could be uh, us running late. It could be a number of things. But I have to digress, find me a little private space, begin to pray to God in the spirit in my prayer language so he could hear me. Amen. Let him call my spirit. <coughs> and the fact that I just stepped to him and said, God, I need you right now. I gave him my heart. Amen. All right, all right. I didn't sit in my whatever was going on for the morning. I didn't just sit there trying to figure it out on my own. I immediately turned to God and said, God, I need your help today. In order to fulfill the assignment that you have on me today, I need you to remove any barriers that may cause me to not give you the highest and most glorious praise you deserve. Remove them, block them, get them on out the way, and let's do what we got to do, God. I need you. And God's like, it's okay to ask me that because I want your heart. And when you ask me that, I'm, I have your heart. Because I want to remove those things so I have just your heart so you're not distracted by this stuff. Because guess what? I'm going to take care of this stuff anyway. Right. You don't need to be worried about that. Yeah, Somebody get that. Yes. My question to you, and you should ask yourself this, what do I love most? What do I love most? And, 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 and listen, you go as deep as you want with that, but I'm just asking a general question. What do I love most? most? And the first thing that popped in your head is the one thing you love most. I don't know what it is. It could, have, it could have been your family. It could have been whatever it is. Whatever you popped in your head the first time I asked that question, that is what you love most. If it wasn't God, <laughs> then we got some work to do. We have some work to do. Here's the second, the second thing I want to share with you. Worshiping God's way. Number one, with all your heart and soul, meaning expressing my deepest affection to God. Here's the second thing. All your mind. All your mind. Watch this. Focus my attentions on God. Focus my attention on God. Everything is focused on God. When we come into this place, that should be our only focus. Not who's here. Not, not, not who's Who's sitting next to me? Now, who's sitting in the seat that I like to sit in, but they know I like to sit in, but if they come regularly, they would know I like to sit in that seat, but not focus on all that. Not focusing on if the sound sounds right. Not focusing on, are they going to sing my jam today? Not focusing on, how long is pastor going to preach? But focusing on, when I come into this place, when I pull up in this parking lot, I'm already ready. I'm already having a spirit of expectancy. I'm expecting to encounter God in a radical way. Yes. My focus is all about Jesus. Amen. Not who shows up. I, I tell my wife all the time, because sometimes we have that conversation, and you think we'll have enough people tomorrow to set up. I'm like, I don't care if nobody shows up to set up. We don't need to set up. We're just, we gonna have church. Amen. We gonna have church. Amen. We, we gonna have church. I don't care. I don't need stuff to have church. I have church in the parking lot. I go to Kroger right now and have some church. All right. Just start walking down the aisle, start, start praying in tongues and just laying hands on people, just walking, grabbing the aisle and like, hallelujah. <laughs> just walking, blessing folk. I'm going to have church wherever I need to have church. The church ain't a building. Amen. Amen. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> that's, a new, that's another sermon Hallelujah. The church in the building We are the church Amen. So I don't worry about stuff My focus is God I want to encounter him in a radical way Each and every time I come into his presence I want it to be a new experience I don't want it to be like the last one If the last one was good Heck the next time I come in your presence God I want it to be better Amen. Why? Because I always want to be thirsty for you Not thirsty for him or her But thirsty for you I always want to be hungry for you. I always want to be searching for you. I always want to desire more of you in my life. This is why my focus is on God. Because every encounter I want it to be unique. And I want the same for you all. 
I want when you come into the presence, I want you to come with an expectancy like, you know what, today I expect to hear God in an audible voice. I dare some of y'all to begin praying that. God, today's the day I want to actually hear your voice. Amen. Do you know it's possible? Yes. If God can speak to you in a whisper, yes. he can speak to you audibly. You can hear his voice. I dare y'all to try to go to that deep level. My prayer every day now is God let me see further than I've ever seen before. Amen. The only way I'll be able to see further than I've ever seen before is to actually be constantly seeking God. All right, man. Because what I'm saying in essence, God let me see my future through your eyes. Right. Woo, that's good. Somebody write that down. <laughs> let me see my future through your eyes not what I think I want for my life but what you actually do have in store for me and what you want for my life the only way that happens is if I'm constantly focused on him I'm not focused on the stuff and I know that's hard we're church planners right we have to set up sound we've got to set up a mosaic we don't have to set up a mosaic cafe but I love y'all enough to set up a mosaic cafe All right. you go to some church you don't get no coffee Sure right? I, I, I just like y'all enough, so like I just give them some coffee. Either, either. Right? Give them a little snacky snack, you know? Just just to say, yeah, you know, you I like you. You know. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> like Real talk, we don't have to set that up. We don't we don't we don't have to have a kids ministry. Actually we do. But based upon today's standards, not every church has a kids ministry. I'm surprised at the number of churches that don't have an active children's ministry. Not Sunday school, but an actual children's ministry. A service that's designed just for them, where they can worship in their own way. Here's what I tell people all the time. Why do, and, and this is off subject, but I gotta get this out. Why do we expect our kids to go to school during the week, hang out with their peers for eight hours during the day, and then on Sunday we expect them to just be a grown folk? They're not gonna learn just in our presence. They learn best around people that look like them. People, I question to you all, ask yourself this. When I come to church, what do I think about most? When I come to church, what do I think about most? God. God. Amen. That's the hope. Jesus. That's the hope. Amen. All your strength. What does that mean? Use my abilities for God. Amen. With all my strength means I'm going to use my abilities for God. If you've gone through our growth track, one of the things we say in 101, I tell you face to face, I say this, every person in this room is a 10 in some area, and God wants you to use your 10 to build up his kingdom. If you've gone through 101, you've heard me say that. I've said it from the pulpit. I've said it numerous times. If you are in this church, you are a 10 in some area, and God wants you to use your 10, whatever that area is, to build his kingdom, not to do Pastor Broderick a favor. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if, you, if you do stuff at the church to do me a favor, you'll let me down. You will. I'm human. You can apologize to me. I'm your friend. I can't punish you. I can't, I can't even bless you. I, mean, I can give you a little something if I got it, but I can't bless you. But God, if you begin to think, you know what? It's a privilege. For me to serve God with what he's given me. Yes. I have the privilege of serving God with my gift. It's an honor that he chose a wretch like me to serve and represent him and to build his kingdom. Wow, God, why me? Then you begin to turn your, your whole thinking around. Because here's the thing, you won't let God down. I was telling my wife and I was telling some pastors last night when we were in the green room after we had this prayer service. And I says, I've been uh, tearing up, I mean, tearing stuff down and building stuff up, meaning church planning for nine, since 2009. I says, and I ain't tired yet. Because I get the privilege to do this. There's not a Sunday that I don't want to come to this place and be with you all. It's not a single Sunday that I don't want to come to this place and hopefully there's a new face in the crowd that doesn't know Jesus. Hopefully there's a new face in the crowd that just is looking for relationship. Hopefully there's a face in the crowd that says, you know what, I want to be a part of something wonderful and unique and new and fresh. I want to help build this thing called Mosaic. And I'm looking forward to greeting that person and saying, hey, welcome to the family. God loves you. He doesn't condemn you. 
He wants you. He wants you to use your 10. I look forward to those moments every single Sunday. And I, I, and I often wonder, will there ever be a point where I experience this thing that many pastors experience? Burnout. Because I go so hard for God. And I firmly believe that, 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 that God gives me the energy. Like, I'll go hard for Him, but then I'll crash hard too. I'm not going to lie. I get home and I'm... <laughs> You might call 911 to wake me up. But I go hard in the paint for God. And I often wonder, God, will, 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 how long will you sustain me? I've been doing this since 2009. Why am I not tired? Why am I not frustrated, God? And God has said, because this is what I called you to do, son. And then you show me these visions through prophecy of the next steps. And I'm like... Oh, wow, this will take even more energy. Like, for real? And God is like, yes, son, for real. Me, you. You. But God is not calling me by myself. Right. He's calling you, Joseph. He's calling you, Kim. He's calling you, Brian. He's calling you, Mark. He's calling you, Alicia. He's calling you, Rhonda. He's calling Melvin. He's calling Sandra. He's calling Michelle. He's calling Craig. He's calling Michael. He's calling Brittany. He's calling Will. He's calling the entire Jesse family. He's calling Tia. He's calling everybody. He's calling Chantel. He's calling Tina. He's calling Miss Davis. He's calling Ja'Kai. He's calling Trey. He's even calling that baby Andrew back there. He's calling Yeshua. He's not calling Avis. He's calling Elizabeth. He didn't just call me. My part is the shepherd. But what is your part? Begin to ask God. God, what's my part? I'm at Mosaic Church for a reason. He's calling you, Miss Causey. What's my part? What's my peace in this puzzle? What's my peace in this mosaic? Begin to pray that prayer. I want you to think about that and I'm going to come back and I'm going to pray for us. Worship team. Come on. Come on, jump up on your feet and give God a praise in this place. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on our online campus today. I pray that today's message had a profound effect on your life today. Perhaps you want to make a decision today to honor God with your life. Perhaps you want to rededicate your life or you just want to just have a fresh start. I want to walk you through a prayer of salvation. And this, this prayer is for everybody and anybody, those who want to give their life to Christ for the very first time, those who want to restore their relationship with Christ. Join me in saying this prayer. Say this prayer with me. Say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for the sins that I've committed. Forgive me for trying to figure life out on my own. God, today I surrender my life to you. I believe in my heart that your son died for me and took sin away on the cross. And I confess today with my mouth that he died and rose three days later and that he is the son of God. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says if you, if you say that prayer and you believe it in your heart that you are saved and today is a brand new start, if you've made that decision, to follow God, do us a favor. There's a banner right below. Click that banner. Let us know you made that decision so that we can be in prayer for you. The Bible says we're two or three are joined. God is there. And so we want to make sure that we are part of the two or three that are in your life serving God and praying for you. Hey, God bless you. God keep you. And the glory of heaven shine upon you. Have a great day.